Hey guys, today we are looking at the New Age spirituality movement. First, I want to define it, and then I want to give an honest perspective on this from a Christian worldview. So here we go. New Age spirituality, broadly speaking, is a kind of worldview which has really started to flourish in America, especially among millennials like myself. It is actually quite difficult to define. There's no holy book, there's no doctrine. In fact, the movement is all about getting rid of these things. It beckons us to adopt a more Eastern mindset where all the different religions are stripped of their doctrine and you get to decide which spiritual practices you'd like to adopt. This means that you end up with a wide variety of spiritual practices across the board and all different levels of depth by which people are engaging in. It can be as simple as centering yourself to spiritual yoga, to being a full-fledged guru who does healing therapy channeling the earth's energies with magic beads and crystals. As a whole, they often talk about enlightenment, about experience, about freedom, about an exciting new age of spiritual pluralism and helping others break free from the shackles of religion so that we can evolve as a human race. Followers might call themselves New Agers, but it seems that a more common description these days is simply to say that you are spiritual but not religious, SBNR for short. So what do I think of all this? Well, for starters, if you identify as spiritual but not religious, I understand where you're coming from. People are tired of religion and religious systems and all the ways that it has been mishandled in our world. We have seen division, we have seen hate, we have seen suppression of truth, scandals and extraordinary acts of evil take place in the name of religion. I don't like it any more than you do. And in light of this, our world is gripped by the idea that the human race would just drop religion and step into a new kind of freedom, as it were, where you're no longer bound by rules and doctrine. Everyone gets along and you can just take whatever works in order to love well and to get that spiritual experience you're going for. But I have some serious concerns with New Age. Imagine that I had a painful stomach virus that could be treated with prescription meds, but instead of going to the doctor for a prescription, I went inside my friend's medicine cabinet and picked whatever pills had my favorite color. Depending what I grabbed, I might get some relief, maybe. But at the end of the day, it wouldn't work, and there's a good chance that I would actually be worse off, even if I didn't realize it right away. That's the concern I have with the SBNR movement. We're messing with spiritual things, expecting that we can just pick whatever suits our fancy and it's going to heal us. We don't even pause to consider if we are doing something that might actually be harmful. Today, a big question people are asking is, why can't I just be a spiritual person? But I think there are better questions we need to ask. What is the problem of our world and does being just spiritual fix the problem? I hear so many people argue for SBNR and they don't even talk about this. That blows my mind. These are questions of the soul. If we get this wrong, then we might find ourselves face to face with the God of this universe in a lifetime of regret. Herein lies the big difference between New Age and Christianity. I'm not a Christian because I think Christianity is really great. I do think it's great, at least when it's done properly. But fundamentally, I am a Christian because I am convinced both in my heart and in my mind that God has shown himself to be real in the person of Jesus Christ. I am convinced in his death and resurrection that it actually happened in history. I deny blind faith and I think these are defensible positions to hold. So what is the problem of our world? Well, if Christianity is true, and I really think it is, then the problem is our rebellion against the God of this universe, the solution, is not to be a spiritual person, nor is it to be a religious person for that matter. The solution is Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, rose again, and empowered us to love others and to declare his freedom until the whole world hears. New Agers, SBNR folks, they all have different ways that they like to describe the concept of God. That which existed before everything else, a kind of source, the material of our universe, the essence of love, a non-personal force that lives inside every atom of our universe, the list goes on. But one thing I have found to be common among almost every New Ager is this. They like to say that the Christian view of God is limiting. Let me push back on that a little. Their God has no name. Their God has no face. Their God is unable to relate to us in our deepest needs for relationship. 
Their God is hopelessly abstract. Their God does not hear our prayers or speak kind words of encouragement in our darkest hours. Their God has no eyes of love, no plan of redemption or forgiveness. Honestly, it sounds really lonely. But the Christian view of God is this, that God became man and lived among us. He has a name. It is Jesus. He understands what it is to be fully human and to suffer. He tells us to cast our burdens on him, and he gives us good reason to believe that he is true. Our God gave us his word, the Bible, so that we don't have to wander around in the dark places of ourselves in order to figure out who he is. He also gave us the Bible with its various commandments so that we don't hurt ourselves. He continues to speak to us today. He gives us not just another spirit, but he gives us himself, his Holy Spirit, to empower us and to fill us with the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And with the Spirit also come spiritual gifts, various forms of empowerment so that we can live a life of fruitful ministry. And we say that's limiting? Maybe you've had the unfortunate experience of knowing Christianity in a very unchristian kind of way, but that does not mean you have to jump ship and try to figure out God on your own. Don't do this alone. It sounds to me like you need a good church, a family of believers that really knows how to love God, how to love others, and how to teach the Bible in a way that really cares for the souls of those who are privileged to hear it. May God bless you on this journey. Thanks for watching.